Welcome to the Hopcast. Thanks for coming back, everybody. I'm Brad Chmielewski. My name is Ken Hunnameter. And today we got a couple beers at our table. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we have some beer to guards. We have one Belgian, one French. So we should uh, have a pretty good time today. Uh, beer to guard is kind of like it's a weird style. It's like I don't know. It's hard to find a straight ahead definition of beer to guard. Um, as far as I'm concerned, beer to guards are pretty much just saisons. They're farmhouse beers, but right. they're a little darker in color than traditional saison, right. and uh, and also for workers that harvest on your farm, oh. farmhouse ale. Oh, okay. But yeah, it's something you know, light and refreshing, just like a saison, but maybe has a little bit more of a depth from that deeper uh, roasted for kiln malt. Uh, just a little bit different take. Okay. So we have one from. Belgian, which is the Dupont. And then we also have uh, one from France, from Albaron. I don't know where to start. This is eight and a half. What's that? This guy is seven. I guess. Go seven. French first. Let's get the French out of the way. Yeah. Wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, quite hazy, uh, a little lighter than I had anticipated. Right, because you were thinking beer to guards are darker, but not necessarily, right? Apparently not necessarily. <laughs> we had uh, we phoned a friend, checked yeah. the internet. Yeah, uh, the, apparently the, the beer to guards that we typically run in, into in the United States are typically darker, but doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be that way, or traditionally they didn't, they weren't that way. Um, so beer to guard uh, literally translates beer to keep. Beer to keep. So these are beers that were brewed in in the fall and then kept through the winter, uh, and you drink them in the spring. So a, a typical characteristic of these beers is they have what they call cellared notes, um, and by way of of keeping them because they are not necessarily super strong beers, they're going to have that those different types of oxidation and that's appropriate for that style. Okay. Interesting. Well, yeah, I already I already took a sip too. <laughs> it is so, good. Yeah, yeah, this is really nice. Uh, so the notes, no. But <laughs> I'm kinda getting some mildly. Okay. Very mildly. Could that be from the green bottle here? Green bottle, yeah, good question. Um, yes. Yes, it could be. It okay. could be uh, typically what you're, what you're, but it might be misinterpreted. What you're going to get from a green bottle is you're going to get light coming in through that bottle, uh, causing it to skunk. Right. So pretty much the Corona factor. Right. So if you're drinking um, Corona or Rolling Rock. Right, and then obviously uh, Corona is going to happen a quicker degree than, say, a green bottle would because it's clear. Uh, the green will block out more than the clear, but not as much as the brown bottles. Right. So I feel like I saw something online at one point where they broke down the light. So you might be able to search that, like the amount of light that gets through a different color. Right. And if you look at like a classic bottle of Saison Dupont in a 750 milliliter size, it's green. If you get a four pack of them, they're brown. And I've heard recently that the even the seven 150 milliliters are moving to brown. So finally, they're kind of like, I mean, I think it was just a staple for them. We're like, yeah, we got these fancy green bottles and they look beautiful and blah, blah, blah. Wow. But now they're they're actually starting to, oh, like, oh, yeah, because I've done a side-by-side -side of DuPont in the brown and the green, and it's vastly different. Okay. And that's because, you know, we're getting them shipped all the way over here. So yeah. you never know time. how it's handled. Yeah. That's why the can. Can. <laughs> Stays on. Stays on Come DuPont on. the can. can. <laughs> Why are you fucking with the brown bottle? Yeah. If you're gonna change, just go all the way. <laughs> but anyways, we haven't, monks, like, we haven't just... even really talked about this beer at all. 
had some pissed off monks now. They're like <laughs> trying to yell at the camera, but they can't. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they're watching for sure. But anyways, uh, so Beardegard from France, from Albaron. I feel like French craft beer is like, it's this, uh, you kind of come across it randomly and they're usually pretty awesome. Uh, they're usually expensive when you get them and that's why you don't see them too often, but usually you have one and you're like, wow, why am I not drinking more French craft beer? <laughs> <laughs> like Italian as well. Expensive and good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this, this has a great yeast character on it. It's just absolutely beautiful. And just a very soft malt yeah. type of flavor. Uh, not much in the way it hops, and, and you wouldn't expect it in, in a beer like this. Uh, but man, this is a delicate, just like exquisite beer. Right. A little phenolic and a little bit of uh, acidity to it. But man, just a great drinker. Yeah, it's one of those where you just keep drinking more of it, and now our bottle's like gone. Yeah. <laughs> Whoops. Sat around talking about beer to guards for yeah. too long and drank all of our beer. <laughs> <laughs> That's their problem. Like, Should we change these bottles? They like drink more and like. So. <laughs> well, should we finish yeah. this up and move on to the DuPont? Absolutely. Cheers. Well, like I said, we could drink more of this, but we already did. <laughs> <laughs> we could, and now we can't because well, we did. So. We'll move on to the DuPont. Yeah, DuPont. Classic uh, a Belgian brewery known for their farmhouse, uh, Cezanne. Cezanne DuPont. It's kind which... of a, an archetype in the, in the industry here. Well, Ken, I would comment on the color, but all I have is head <laughs> <laughs> in this glass. Yeah, it's an effervescent one. Uh, deeper color than the previous. I mean, we're looking at more of an orange, burnt, burnt orange type of uh, a little appearance there. A little cloudy. The head's kind of dissipating into it. My beard is coming into focus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, beautiful head. I mean, man, just sticking there. Doesn't want to go away. Gotta love that. And as we we've said before, like. Don't be afraid of that head. It's going to get out of the way. The It'll get beer, out of the way. The beer is just going to come yeah, through. Yeah, see, look at yeah. that. Look at that. It slips through. Look at there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, say, or, uh, DuPont yeah. Brewery. Famous for Saison DuPont. Spicy. They're, yeah, they're known for that traditional yeast strain, that DuPont yeast strain. And um, it's coming right through in, the, in this beer. Yeah, Absolutely. This, this almost smells like uh, smoky. Yeah, it's got a little bit of smoke to it. I'm not sure where it's coming from, but yeah, makes me a lot of phenols. Of, think of the Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka. Uh, the, not Sri Lanka. The, what's that smoked beer where they use? Uh, oh, Schlankerla. Schlankerla. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> no, they do a lot of smoking in Sri yeah. Lanka. <laughs> <laughs> Let's drink. Let's drink. <laughs> Maybe my problem. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this one a uh, little more hop forward than than the previous. Yeah, more, much, much more malty. Yeah, a little more caramel type of character to it. And so as we were finding out like what the beer de garde is, we found out that beer de garde isn't a term that's used in Belgium, right? No. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it's you know they've got uh, French and Belgium are right on the border there, and so it sounds like that if you do something in France, uh, say a beer de garde where it originated, the Belgian people, even though some of them speak French, you wouldn't necessarily call your beer a beer de garde. You would just call it something maybe a little bit more generic, even though it kind of is a beer de garde. Uh, just. So as not to defeat into the French lifestyle. Oh, like <laughs> Champagne. You can call it that. <laughs> right, right. The French are very But for particular. a different reason. Everyone wants to call their sparkling white wine champagne, whereas the Belgians 
don't even want to associate themselves we with don't a, call ourselves a french that. style <laughs> never we would never want to do that we make beer you make wine right <laughs> but nonetheless i mean i think the but you have to but they could be a beer to guard but you have to kind of you're looking but they call for, it something else but you you can kind of determine if it's a beer to guard based on some characteristics of the beer right. itself and, and right and so and so like we said like you're looking for that phenolic saison yeast character Especially uh, apparent in in uh, Dupont's beers because they have that uh, yeast strain that you would you should find kind of familiar, and and also you're looking for those like cellared notes. So something like a, a dried fruit or a sherry like type of character, uh, or on the far end the cardboard, which right. would be a different kind of oxidation. But you might find that yeah, but um, that would be less des desirable in the style. You're looking for probably more acceptable would be that that sherry like character. Okay. So I think I feel like I'm maybe getting some of that dried fruit missing this, but Absolutely. I think coupled with some of that um, caramel like malt character, wow. you're they're kind of playing off of each other and creating something a little unique. I mean the beer is is great. I mean, it's it's got a little bit more bitterness than the other. Right. I feel like these are both just different. They're different beers, like even though they're but possibly you could, same style. Yeah, you can see how they're beer. in the same style, but obviously two different takes. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it smells rustic. It smells like it came from a farm. It's it's farmhouse, you know. Mm -hmm. So I mean, there, there's a reason that uh, we love these beers over here. I mean, we've got a lot of great breweries in, in the states that are making fantastic Belgian styles but there's something about making French and Belgian styles over in that region that is just you can't duplicate it right that's what they that's what they do yeah you know? so yeah, every every place has its thing so you got to pay homage <laughs> every once in a while so yeah cheers to these uh, French and Belgian Belgian breweries they've done a nice job and we certainly enjoy the fruits of their label. Yeah. Cheers.